This is normal speed. This is slow motion. And this is super slow motion. If you're looking to create slow motion content, these two action cameras stand out from the rest of the pack by offering advanced super slow motion capabilities. Now one of them does it the conventional way using higher frame rates, the other one uses AI trickery. But which one gives you the best super slow motion results? Well, let's find out. Pretty much every action camera offers some form of slow motion capability, and the way they work is by allowing you to capture at a very high frame rate, which when you play it back at a normal speed gives you that slow motion effect. Now, when you're recording in 4K, most action cameras top out at 120 frames per second, which depending on your playback speed will give you a four to five times slowdown. And if you drop the resolution to 1080p, you can probably get 240 frames per second, which will give you an 8 to 10 times slowdown. But there are two cameras, the GoPro Hero 13 and the DJI Action 5 Pro, which allow you to go even further. The Hero 13 offering up to 400 frames per second, and the Action 5 Pro a staggering 960 frames per second. Now, the entire story is a little bit more complicated than that, and that's what we're going to take a look at in today's video. We're going to look at how each of these cameras provides that super slow motion capability. We'll look at how to set it up and how to use it. And of course, we'll do some testing to compare the results from each. Now, there's a lot to cover, so as usual, I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline. But first, this. Before we continue with today's video, a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. Now, I do include links to the featured products as well as my recording equipment. These may appear throughout the video and in the video description. If you purchase using these links, I may make a commission, and this is what helps fund the channel. But rest assured, there is no price disadvantage to you, you are getting the best price I can find. Alternatively, if you want to support the channel, you could follow this link and buy me a coffee. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So back to the video. With the introduction of the Hero 13, GoPro also introduced a new feature called Burst Slow-Mo offering three new high-speed recording modes. Now, the first of these I find a little bit odd, and that is 5.3K at 120 frames per second. Now, as I already mentioned earlier, pretty much every action camera, the Hero 13 included, already offers 4K at 120 frames per second. And while, yes, it's always nice to have a little bit of extra resolution, the big drawback of the 5.3K 120 is that you are limited to a recording time of just five seconds. Now, admittedly, when you slow down that five second recording, it becomes 20 to 25 seconds, which is probably enough footage. But for me, the bigger issue is that that five seconds offers a very limited time window to capture the exact shot you're looking for. Personally, I would prefer to just use the standard video mode at 4K 120, which allows me to record as long as I want. Now, the other two modes are what I would definitely consider super slow motion. 360 frames per second and 400 frames per second. But these modes also come with limitations. But in this case, it's no longer the time limitation. Both modes allow you to record for up to 15 seconds, which is probably enough to capture what you're looking for. And of course, by the time you've slowed it down, those 15 seconds become several minutes of footage. The limitations of these modes, however, have more to do with the resolution and field of view. When recording at 360 frames per second, you are forced to use the linear field of view, and the resolution is just 900p. And if you want to record in 400 frames per second, you have to use the narrow field of view, and the resolution is now limited to 720p. Setting up and using the burst slow-mo mode is pretty straightforward. You simply select burst slow-mo, select from the three available options, and simply start the recording. Of course, you can stop the recording yourself at any time, 
or you can allow the camera to stop the recording automatically when it reaches the time limit. 5 seconds for 5.3K120 and 15 seconds for the other modes. One thing to keep in mind when you are using these very high frame rates is that your shutter speed needs to match. So for example, if you are recording at 400 frames per second, that means your shutter speed must be 1 400th of a second or faster, so you really need good lighting in order to use this mode. And once you're done recording, it's simply a case of loading the files into your video editor and adjusting the playback frame rate or the speed factor depending on how your video editor software works. Now, DJI has taken a completely different approach to offering super slow motion. The Action 5 Pro offers two different super slow mo modes 4K at 480 frames per second or 1080p at 960 frames per second. However, it's important to point out that the camera itself does not record at those high frame rates. All of this is done using AI frame interpolation in post-processing, which can be done in the camera or in the DJI MIMO app. What you need to do is record standard video, not slow motion video, at either 4K 120 frames per second, which is upscaled to 480, or 1080p 240 frames per second, which is upscaled to 960. So very simply, during the post-processing, the camera or the MIMO app analyzes each frame and basically recreates three frames between each actual frame of the recording, which simulates that higher frame rate. Now the benefits of doing this way are of course that you maintain the high resolution of either 4K or at least 1080p, you can use any supported field of view, and also your shutter speed only needs to be a 1 20th of a second or a 2 40th of a second, which allows you to use these modes in much lower lighting conditions than if you were to use those actual frame rates. The big question, of course, is how well does the interpolation work? How well does it recreate those missing frames? And that's something we'll see in our testing. Now, there is a lot of information to cover when it comes to the super slow motion mode on the Action 5 Pro, and I plan on posting an entirely separate video covering that in a lot more detail. But for the purposes of today's video, I just want to keep it as simple as possible. So briefly then, the workflow for the Action 5 Pro is, first of all, to simply record standard video in either 4K 120 or 1080p 240. And then to convert it to super slow motion, we're going to process it either using the camera itself or the DJI MIMO app. To edit with the camera, simply load and play a compatible file. After a couple of seconds, a snail icon will appear to the right of the play pause icon. Simply play or scrub to the part where you want the super slow motion to begin, and then hit the snail icon to begin processing. And once processing is complete, you can review the result. If using the MIMO app, here too, simply load and play a compatible file. In the editing options at the bottom, you'll also find the snail icon. Simply tap on it to enter the super slow motion editing interface. Just above the timeline on the right, you will see two snail icons, one with a plus, one with a minus, which are used for creating or deleting super slow motion segments. And here too, you can review the result and edit as needed. In order to do the fairest possible comparison, I set up both of the cameras like this so I could film the exact same clip on both cameras. But even so, the comparison is extremely challenging. Not only do you have a slightly different viewpoint from each camera, but also the GoPro enforces a much narrower field of view than the DJI. And then of course there is the difference in the frame rate. 360 or 400 frames per second on the GoPro, and 480 or 960 frames per second on the DJI. But hopefully I have put things together in a way that makes sense. So for the first test I wanted to get the absolute slowest super slow motion clip possible out of both cameras. That would be by using 400 frames per second on the GoPro, 
which comes with a narrow field of view and 720p resolution, and 960 frames per second on the DJI, which uses the standard field of view and 1080p resolution. Now my first interest was to compare the image quality between the two, so in order to do that I sped up the output from the DJI by two and a half times in order to match the speed of the GoPro. And here you can see the results. You can clearly see the resolution advantage of the DJI, but of course the GoPro is heavily cropped in. If we crop in on the DJI to create similar framing, more on that in a moment, you can see that there's not much to choose between the two. That being said, it's important to remember that using these settings, the DJI can produce super slow motion clips two and a half times slower than the GoPro. For the second test, I wanted to create the highest possible quality super slow motion clip. So that would be 360 frames per second on the GoPro, which uses a linear field of view and 900p resolution versus 480 frames per second on the DJI, which uses the standard field of view and 4K resolution. Once again, in order to compare the image quality, I sped up the output from the DJI in order to match the frame rate of the GoPro, and here you can see the results of the two. Once again, you can clearly see the higher resolution on the DJI, but this time when we zoom in to match the framing, you can see that the DJI maintains superior resolution. And once again, it's important to remember that at these settings, the DJI can produce super slow motion results about 25% slower than the GoPro. Now, when you look at the results from those last couple of tests, you might be thinking that when we zoomed in on the DJI in order to match the framing on the GoPro, there really wasn't that much difference in image quality, particularly for the first example. But this is a little unfair to the DJI because the GoPro is forcing us to use that narrow field of view, and the only way to match it is by zooming in digitally on the DJI clip. So for the third test, I thought I would flip this around. So once again, I'm looking to get the slowest possible super slow motion clip, 400 frames per second on the GoPro, 960 frames per second on the DJI, but this time what I'm going to do is record it on the DJI, then move further away from the subject with the GoPro in order to match that same framing and film it on the GoPro. And here you can see the results of that test. In this case, even though we have now matched the framing on both, you can see there is a clear image quality advantage for the DJI. And also important to remember that here too, when using these settings, the DJI delivers super slow-mo results about two and a half times slower than the GoPro. For me, there is one clear winner here, and that is the Action 5 Pro. Even though DJI technically cheated, there's no denying that the Action 5 Pro produced slower slow motion and also did so with higher image quality. Now, credit to GoPro for trying to do this the honest way by actually using higher frame rates, but when you look at the sacrifice in resolution and field of view, the results really aren't great. And when you factor in that using a high frame rate means that you have to use a high shutter speed combined with the very small sensor in the Hero 13, this is not a solution that's going to work well in anything but very bright lighting. Back to the Action 5 Pro, frankly I was a bit surprised at how well the frame interpolation worked. Now, as I said earlier, there is a lot more to this story, and I plan on posting a follow-up video with a lot more detail on this feature, but for now, congratulations to the Action 5 Pro. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, if you want to share your experience or make suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.